Hey everyone, I'm Sal Sincata, and in this month's Product Spotlight, we're checking out Skylum's Luminar 2018. All right, so let's jump right into Luminar 2018. Uh, right out of the gate, you're going to notice the, the interface is a little bit different, you know, and I'm kind of, I, I want to let everyone watching know, uh, I don't have a whole lot of experience with this, so it's not like I've been using this for years. Uh, I'm kind of working my way through it. Um, you know, I, I, I demoed it a couple of minutes before we started rolling just to get a, a sense of it. And so I want to see how intuitive it is. And it's fairly intuitive. Uh, a lot of online training videos for you to get used to. Um, but, right, the controls, everything looks and feels a little bit different. I know photographers, that scares us sometimes. But uh, I'm finding it very easy to use. So across the bottom here, you've got a set of category presets, right, to get you started. And I'm a big fan of presets. Uh, because it just helps me get to a starting point. I like to save time, right? I'm not talking about basic color correction of an image. Uh, just once you get it color corrected, then what, right? It's got to have a little bit of pizzazz to it. And so they've got some uh, presets here that you can uh, use and work with. And so for this, we're going to start with their street presets. Um, and what you're going to notice here on the right is this concept of a workspace. And so this is really interesting. It's new. This allows you to add filters and think of filters as each individual knob and dial, if you will, right? So if we want to do white balance, if we want to do clarity, uh, these are individual filters. And this was really interesting for me to start playing around with. So of course, they've got some jump off points for you, um, essentials, aerial photography, black and white. But this was really interesting for me to mess around with because if you think about it, most of us work within the same sets of knobs and dials as we're working on images. And so this allows us a, a really cool way to create our own custom workspaces. But I think once I get into it, it'll all make a little bit more sense, right? So we can, we can add the professional and uh, this, we're viewing it in a collapsed view, single view mo mode, they call it, um, but right, your color temperature, your exposure, you know, so your raw develop mode and all these other things that you could possibly add. And that's one of their preset workspaces. So let's clear that workspace. And this is an image I took in the, uh, in the desert in Vegas here recently. This is straight out of camera. So nothing's been done to it at this point. So what I want to do is just start with enhanced reality um, here as a preset and it, right out of the gate, right? You're seeing that it gives it a bunch of punch in the image, uh, saturates things a little bit, uh, and it, it's a great start point. But the one thing you wanna notice down here at the bottom is you've got the ability on this kind of preset to control how much of it you really want, right? So if we wanna dial it down to zero, uh, we can do that. And then of course, if we wanna really you know, go 100%, we can do that. And then on the right here is the custom workspace that makes up this preset, right? So you're seeing it's structure, a polarizing filter, saturation vibrance, and then just this raw develop mode. Uh, okay, that's cool. It's a good way to get started. Let's kind of pull this back just a little bit. Let's go to like 90, 89, 90%. Uh, but now let's work on this, okay? So here we can add filters. So you'll notice here we have the ability to add filters. And as we go through, we see uh, essentials, we see uh, issue fixers, creatives, and they really do a good job of giving you some, um, you know, call out data here. So you know this help, so you know what you're looking at, what each, uh, each one does, right? And that's important, I think, uh, to kind of get a sense of these. And there's a lot of filters that just do not exist in, um, uh, other other images, I'm sorry, of other applications. The, these things just don't exist uh, in them. So this is going to be fun for you to start playing with and working with your uh, with your applications, right? Things like LUT mapping, uh, split color warmth, photo filters, uh, all things that aren't necessarily in Lightroom uh, or in Photoshop. So it's a nice blend, I feel like, uh, of the two. So let's add uh, color temperature here. Okay, so I'm going to add that. It's going to pop up here on the right. And I want to warm this up a little bit. So let's warm this image up. All right. I kind of like the way that's going, but uh, maybe that's too much uh, overall color temperature. So now I'm going to adjust saturation. 
and just pull this down a little bit. I just want to desat that image and it's going to be very subtle. All right. I like the way that's looking and you're seeing how intuitive this is uh, as I'm working with it, right? It's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, now what I want to do is this foreground rock, I want, to I want it to have a little bit more texture. So now I'm going to go to structure. I'm going to hit brush. And now this is going to allow me, and I'm just going to hit my bracket key to make the brush uh, bigger. And what I'm going to do is just brush on, in this area, some texture. Now, it's not very apparent as I'm doing it. So we're going to crank up this structure to 100%. Okay. Now you're really seeing that texture come through just here on the bottom. And then it's got a booster here, and we'll go to 100, and you see it just gets really ignorant. <laughs> it's a little bit too much. So if we come down here to like, I think 45, 50, I like it. And then of course, we've got the, you know, the eye here so we can see what it looks like on and off, right? And so you're seeing that. And also up top here, uh, we have the ability to, to quick preview, right? The original image and where we're at now. And I love this feature because it's really quick and you can hit the uh, backspace bar on your keyboard just to really get a sense of DNA and where you're at and, and you know you don't have to undo everything and I, I think that's so important uh, when you're editing is to quickly be able to toggle back and forth what you're looking at all right well I like this now well now I want to add a vignette here so I've got a couple of ways to find it right we've got all these kind of filters here oh my god there's so many um, or I can just go to search and vignette pops up right so now I'm going to add vignette Remember, I'm adding filters to my workspace. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a vignette to this. And don't laugh at me. So I'm going to go to 100. And I'm going to come down in here on size. And this madness will always it will make sense in a minute. Uh, I would never, obviously, let this out the door. But what this is showing me is in a very heavy-handed way where my vignette is going to be. And then, of course, this gives you the ability to play center, which I also think is important, especially if you're shooting in thirds and, and you really want to drive it to the subject. And, and that's something that drives me nuts in Lightroom. And so now you're seeing if I hit this play center, right, it's moving the vignette kind of to where I want it. So if I go, I think we're going to end up right here. I think that looks good. So that's why I'm so heavy handed with it. Now what I'm going to do is feather this, right? So I'm going to come off. But you see, as I feather it, the black is now leaked into her eye here. So now I'm going to play center a little bit higher. Okay. And this, I think we can go right about there. Okay. So I like that. And then the inner light, we can brighten now as well. I really like this feature too. So now, once I've got it looking the way I want, I'm going to back off this vignette. Uh, to get me a little bit closer to the way I want. Right now, if we toggle before and after, you can really see uh, the difference there. Okay, great. Now we've got some options. If this is something I like, right? Remember, I took their base preset, which is enhanced reality, and then I tweaked it uh, for what I want my image to look like. I can now come over here and hit Save Filters Preset, and I can actually create a new preset, right? Uh, this is huge for saving your looks uh, once you get kind of dialed in, right? And I like having my own set of looks uh, for, for tools like this. So what if uh, now, right, we've got uh, the ability to crop it. And I feel like this is really cool because they've got um, a Facebook cover and a Facebook feed crop built right in. Now, while this isn't rocket science, it's something that, you know, we all do. It, it's uh, part of doing business. And just the fact that they have that built in, I thought was really, really cool. So we can go and click Facebook feed. That's going to give you a little bit more of a square crop. Uh, or we can go Facebook cover. Uh, and that's going to give you that right cover style photo. You can move it, adjust it, whatever you want to do, right? So uh, we are going to escape here. Okay. And then, you know, we can also undo this, right, and get back to uh, the way we were. So this now, right, if we toggle again, just to remember, this, I really like the way this image is coming along. So I like this image. I like the way it looks. This is what I would do. Uh, and so now, right, it gives us the ability to export this. 
And now we've got some built-in canned options, exported to mail, messages, Twitter, Facebook, Flickr. Love these options that are there. Uh, we can also open it in some other programs, right? So Aurora, Intensify, Tonality, Photoshop, uh, you name it, it's got that built in. Uh, and then of course we can just do a simple export of the image, uh, control our color space, uh, control the format size, uh, all the things you would come to expect, right? So high level, uh, love the, uh, it's very fast. Uh, I like the way it is to use. I think it's very, very intuitive. And I love this concept of workspaces. And then of course the ability to save these workspaces uh, or save the preset uh, filters, right? So I, I think they've done an incredible job. I look forward to playing with it even more and becoming more and more uh, proficient at the tool. So definitely check this out, download the free trial, start playing around with it because that is always the best way to learn how to use some of these tools. And my philosophy has always been if the tool gives you, uh, you know, a new look and feel to your images, it's worth investing in. So check it out. You're absolutely going to love it.